this week has gone. Um, yeah, so uh, this week has been quite worky. Quite a lot of worky, not so sewy. But never mind. Um, it's lunchtime because this morning I was trying to film in this room and the sun was so bright that um, you could either only see like a white face. <laughs> <laughs> just massively overexposed and then the other half of my face would be completely black um, yes so I have waited to come in here and do this because it was a bit silly um, but this week I have been pottering about I recorded quite a lot of stuff this week just with my camera in my house so you will be able to see what my week's been like um, I got to the studio once um, and managed to do a little bit of stuff which I shall show you. I finished my skirt, hurrah -ly -ra. Um and that's kind of done and then I also did a bit of thinking about my yellow dress with the toile and thing that you saw last week um, and I said at the time that I wanted to change the skirt and so I've done a bit of thinking about that and so I'm kind of fooling about trying to work out what's going to work with that so I shall show you that too um, so yes, it has been a good week, it is beautifully sunny, um, it is not snowing this week, but it is sunny instead, so I have nothing to complain about, and I hope you enjoy this video, take a look and see what I've been up to during the week, and mm -hmm. good morning everybody, it's uh, Monday, it is 25 to 9, um, and I was sitting here drinking my tea, and thought, oh, I'll talk to people about what I did yesterday. So my uh, toile for the yellow dress that I showed in my last video, I've been thinking about what I do about the skirt. Um, as I mentioned in that, it's a bit too narrow for me at the moment. And I thought it could go sort of um, more circle skirty, more 1950s in silhouette. But actually I thought that's gonna be a little bit too cutesy for what I'm after in the nicest possible way. Love cutesy, nothing wrong with that. Um, but I wanted something slightly more formal and tailored, I guess. So I thought, ah, you know what I could do is like the equivalent of a tulip skirt. So provide some body at the hip, but still have that kind of pencil silhouette at the bottom. So it's still quite a narrow silhouette altogether. Um, and it's still quite tailored and structured, uh, but it gives the balance that I want. So I was sort of scribbling last night um, some of the things that I was thinking about. Um, and I will now try to attempt to show you them. This was one, so this was a tulip skirt. Um, sort of idea where it you know crosses over and has sort of side pleats so that was one um, and I think with the, the fabric I'm planning to use I could still get that drape I think I think I need to obviously cut it on the bias but otherwise I think it would work another one is this this one which is like a pencil skirt but then it's got kind of a peplum but the peplum is actually made up of two separate pieces and they're layered on top of each other and there is a Karen Millen skirt that I saw, which has a similar idea, and I really liked it. So that could be quite cool, because it'll just give a bit of body, but actually won't detract too much from the silhouette. And because these are layered, and they get smaller, you probably can't see from my scribble, you could do them in different colours, so you actually get some colour in the skirt, which would be quite cool. And this is another one I found online, um, or at least it was an idea that I saw online, and I kind of adapted slightly. It's like a wrap-over skirt, but then... It has this, it actually folds back into this um, sort of peplum which wraps around. Um, and I just thought it was really interesting and unusual sort of design idea. So I might try something like that. I'm planning to be in the studio tomorrow all day because the rest of my week is really work heavy. Um, so I'm going to try and uh, mock up a few of those in sort of small scale and just see which ones seem to work. So I will no doubt show you progress on that then. Um, but I now need to leave and go and get my train. Um, so I will probably see you tomorrow. Hello everyone. Um, so it's Tuesday morning. I'm all wrapped up because I'm about to wander down to the studio and it's quite cold outside. Um, no idea what time it is. I guess it's about 10-ish. There is no clock. Oh, I'm wearing a watch. Hang on, there's a thought. My watch is hidden under my coat. I still don't know. It's the morning. Um, so yeah, I'm wandering down to the studio. I'm not going to take you with me on the walk because you'll probably feel slightly ill. Um, but I will, yeah, I'll see you over there. And hopefully productive day of sewing will ensue. But we shall see. All right, off we go.
Hello everybody, it's Tuesday evening at about 8 o'clock and I just thought I'd give you a bit of an update. I spent about four hours at the studio today, all told, in and amongst other things, and I managed to get my skirt finished, which is super great. So that's all done and I will show you some footage of it when it's not dark, so the light's a bit better. Um, but yeah, I always do this with projects, I get them to a certain stage and then think it's going to take 20 minutes to finish them and it doesn't, it takes three hours almost inevitably. So this morning I had to make bias binding, uh, Hong Kong finish, the hem, uh, take it up, so obviously mark it all, make sure it was level, take it up, and then also do the lining, um, which took most of the day. <laughs> so I had a plan to get more done than I did, but uh, it's fine, I got it finished, that was the main thing on my list. Um, yeah, and then the other thing I was doing was trying to work out whether these designs for this skirt part of my dress are gonna work. And I did some little paper cutouts which I wanted to show you, so um, I'll just get those. If you remember the peplum skirt, the very last one on the piece of paper I showed you yesterday, it had a kind of, it's, it was a wrap over skirt and then the peplum folded back on itself. And I was trying to work out what the pattern piece would look like for that in order to allow the fold and still have a peplum and da, da da And rather than do it in fabric, which would obviously be time consuming waste fabric, I decided I'd just do it in paper first. So I've, <laughs> I've got this tiny, <laughs> this tiny little uh, skirt <laughs> that I've mocked up, um, uh, which I will now show you. I'm gonna have to put it on a different angle so you can see it properly because I can't hold this and the camera at the same time. So hang on a second. Okay, so this is my little, this is my little model. And essentially this, this is, um, so this is the front half of the skirt and this would be the other side of the front panel. So they're in like two pieces basically. But then obviously the front other half will be a separate piece. And then this has this long wrap over, really long, <laughs> um, that sort of sticks out from one side. Because I was thinking if you wanted to do something where this folds back on itself, you would need to, this needs to fold back like that to make the, like the fold at the front with the peplum. And then it would need to go all the way around the back. Like this. All the way around the back of that piece to make the peplum in the back. And then... comes around the front and sort of s and slides into place on top of the other piece. Like that. So that would go like that. That's better. There. So like that, almost. But then this piece will connect to this back, like that. That's it like that, only, you know, with levelness. Anyway, you kind of get the idea. Um, but I think that will work. Um, it's just a matter of getting this circumference right and this bottom circumference right so it will kick out so the the bottom needs to have a wider circumference than the top to just give it more of a peplumy shape rather than it just being a very flat wrap around it actually needs to kick out at the hip to do what I want it to do um, so now that I have an idea of how this is going to kind of how this will work you know just in a construction sense I'm going to have a bash with some fabric later in the week if I have a chance um, to try and see whether it'll work in fabric as well. So I will show you that. And if not, I may have to revert to one of the other ideas. But I just really like the idea of this being one piece and the fold and stuff is, is just quite appealing. So I'll see if I can get it to work. Uh, yeah, so that's Tuesday done. Uh, tomorrow morning I am working all morning and then the afternoon I've got a bit more time. So hopefully I might get some more stuff done tomorrow afternoon. But um, I will check in with you then. Good morning everybody, it's Wednesday uh, and I'm just about to leave to go to work but I thought I would show you my skirt because I'm wearing it um, and it's finished, hurrah! Um, it's really sunny outside so the sun is like right in my eye line which is slightly distracting, sorry if you're getting weird shadows. Um, yes, so skirt, let me find somewhere I can stand where you're going to be able to see it. Here it is. I'm sorry, it's probably a bit difficult for you to see it, the whole thing. I've got it on with a Zara jumper and um, little suede ankle boots. Cause I'm really pleased with it. It hangs really beautifully. Um, this is the back with the uh, kit pleat accordion thing, which um, has worked out quite well, but hemming it was a bit of a bugger. Yeah, I don't know how you're supposed to hem it normally. Um, and because I did a Hong Kong finish on the hem, 
it uh, added a bit of bulk. So I don't know whether maybe that wasn't the best plan if I was gonna be doing pleats. And what I should have done is done quite a low, narrow hem so that I didn't have too much fabric. Um, so I had to mess around with it a bit to stop it from hanging. It kind of had a kink in it, it was a bit weird. Anyway, um, I think I've managed to fix that. Um, and I will, uh, when I get home this evening, I will film um, a bit of detail of what I've, um, some of the stuff that I've done with it, just so you can see some of the details, because um, there's quite a lot. Um, and I don't have time to do it now, unfortunately. So I'll try and do it this evening or tomorrow morning if the light's not great this evening. Um, yeah, I'm going into town to do um, to do this meeting, and then hopefully this afternoon I can uh, get a bit more other stuff done. I'm coming home, but um, yeah, just thought I'd check in and say skirt is finished, being worn. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll see you later. Hi everyone. So this is the skirt detaily bits that I said that I would film in a little bit better light and when I had some time, which I have to, I have now. So, um, this is the uh, back, fairly obviously, and um, it's hand stitched round the top, so the um, facing is hand under stitched into the, um, sort of, into the seam allowance of the top band, so that it doesn't kick out, but that's just nice, it's got hand detailing. Uh, obviously the zips there and all of the linings in place. And then I have feather stitched the lining down to the um, seam allowance so size to stop it from falling, from coming up because it's not connected at the bottom of the skirt. Um, so the hem is, as I mentioned, Hong Kong finished, finished in just some quilting cotton that I had left. And then the under, and then that's hand catch stitched onto the silk organza underlining, which means that you can't really see it at all on the outside of the skirt, which is kind of cool. And then the lining lining, I have done my traditional lining with lace or finishing with lace, which I still have lots left of and looks really lovely. And then it's just free hanging inside the garment. And to be honest, I think that's probably most of the big details. Yeah, so um, that is my week. Um, question, small question for you all, um, about zips and invisible zips. So I have lots of invisible zips in my garments, they're lovely things, um, and actually I don't find putting them in too horrendous, I know lots of people don't like it, but I think I've kind of got the knack of inserting the thing. My problem, and I can show you it, you can see it on the, on the footage of my dress, but my problem is that when the um, zip goes in, when the zip goes in, oh, it's like having a skirt beard. No? No. Um, <laughs> when the zip goes in, it looks fine. This is pretty invisible, I think. Yep, it's fine. When I wear it, less so. Like the fabric starts to kind of pull apart and you get this thing. Now, part of the problem is that I've used what was termed a transparent zip in this skirt. I mean, it's white, let's be clear. Th this is, <laughs> Let's be clear, this is transparent. It's funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, white, white, not transparent. Um, I bought a load of transparent while thinking, oh great, I'll be able to use them in loads of projects. So I think it must just be that I'm getting the fit wrong and I need to allow more um, sort of ease in the fabric so that when I sit down, it doesn't pull at the zip and then it kind of stays there and then you can see the zip in the back which is really annoying with this skirt because obviously it was something I was trying to make that would be all perfect and wonderful. It's fine, it's not the end of the world. I can't see it when I'm wearing it, but um, it's slightly annoying. So that's one question. How do I stop that from happening? Am I just getting the fit wrong? I suspect I probably am. And then my other thing, which I now have happened in almost every invisible zip I have put in any garment ever, which is more annoying, is that they break. Um, and on my cat skirt, which I've just got off the, out of the wash, it's a bit creased. It's happened and it happened this week, which is just, ah, oh, so annoying. So my zips break um, at the, like, the teeth come away from the zip tape. And it happens just one side of the stitch line and it's so annoying because you can't like I now can't put the zip up or down because the tooth gets the teeth get stuck in the um well like the slider gets stuck in the teeth and comes through to the front. It drives me completely crazy. So I think I must just be buying crap zips, but if anyone can recommend a good brand of zip that will last and not 
you know, dissolve the moment I do anything with it. I would appreciate it. Answers on a YouTube comment thread style postcard uh, would be super. So if you do have suggestions, please recommend, uh, UK based, please. Um, yeah, or I'm, or I'm thinking of just going back to using standard zips because they're less temperamental um, and just having to do lap zips or put them in, you know, in the traditional fashion and overstitch them, which actually looks really neat and lovely. So yeah, I'm feeling slightly out of love with miserable zips this week. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I think these were hemline ones that I bought. So, you know, not a great review from me. Sorry, guys. But yeah, if there are good zips out there, tell me about them, please. Thank you so much. Um, have good weekends, enjoy the sunshine. What was that? It was like street. Uh, <laughs> ah, I'm so not a street person. In case you hadn't gathered, not that street. Street. Um, if <laughs> oh dear, I'm sorry. It's been a long week and I have been hysterical quite a lot for various reasons. So yes, enjoy the sunshine. Have lovely weekends. I will see you next week. Happy sewing. Ta-ta!